This movie based on the 16th century Chinese novel Feng Shen Yanyi, The Investiture of the Gods, the story tells of how King Zhu of Sheng becomes a tyrant due to the wiles of Daji, a vixen spirit who is disguised as one of his concubines, sometimes lazily and erroneously branded as a Chinese X-Men, a franchise with which it has very little in common beyond CGI and powers. Koan Huey's lead of gods is actually much closer, in concept, story and visuals, to Alex Proya's Gods of Egypt. Not that the marketing team would want to play that particular angle, following the much-publicized flop of that film. It's set in a mythical ancient China ruled by the evil King Zhu and his consort Daji, who's actually a nine-tailed fox demon who pulls the strings on every one of his power-hungry moves. But Zhu is met with resistance from the kingdom of Ziki, ruled by King Jai Cheng, the evil and powerful entity from which King Zhu draws his power. A mysterious warrior with a truth-seeking third eye, Lei Zhenzi also meets Blue Butterfly, a whimsical young woman with whom he falls in love, but who's actually a creation of Shengong Bao, King Zhu's chief general, who has orders to kill him and his companions. League of Gods on backstories that are so numerous and quickly sketched that they rob the film of its dramatic impact rather than adding to it. Second, abstruse stakes. Finding a sword of light to defeat a never-glimpsed black dragon, across a fantasy world whose geography, natural laws and mythical tenets are never clearly defined, makes for uninvolving drama that creates its rules as it goes. And third, uneven visuals, much like Peter Pao and Zhao Tianyu's Zhang Qiwi, League of Gods has stunning backgrounds, impressive sets and costumes, inspired creature design and fine cinematography, but devolves into a jerky, weightless and poorly rendered mess any time it wants to have its mythical entities fight one another, which is very often. Except for a fairly exciting last real fight between the Lei Zhenzi, Neja, mounted on fire wheels and throwing powerful rings, Erlangshan and a Balrog-like incarnation of Shingong Bao, most of the protracted showdowns in the film feel interminable. At a little under 100 minutes, League of Gods moves at a crisp, almost overactive pace that undercuts its epic ambitions. It seems always in a rush to reach the next showdown or encounter, never letting scenes play out to satisfying dramatic effect, just as it keeps it from ever boring its audience. As mentioned, Arthur Wang's cinematography and LV Fengshan's costumes are gloriously lavish along with very inspired art direction that manages to hint at a rich and wide mythical world much more than the script can. John Debney's score is a massive and gorgeous undertaking that plays the Cyclopean, mythical angle more than the Asian one, much like Basil Polder's superlative Conan, the barbarian score went for a pre-Christian and operatic vibe. And the starry cast is a delight. 
there's a certain thrill to seeing so many charismatic stars hammy it up in elaborate fantasy costumes, essaying strikingly one-dimensional roles. Jet Li, though first billed, is only in the film for roughly half an hour, but he obviously hasn't had that much fun since 2008's The Forbidden Kingdom. His character having been hit with a reverse aging curse, the star goes from prosthetic-assisted old age to motion-captured youth and infuses his character with whimsical wisdom and understated swagger. Age becomes Li, and we hope he'll reconsider his semi-retirement from cinema. The film's actual lead, Jackie Hume, is superbly athletic, but only moderately charismatic. He has the makings of a fine supporting actor, but is somewhat lacking as a hero. And the ever-reliable Andy on makes more of an impression as his comrade in arms. Tony Loon Ka Fai, Louis Ku and Huing Xiaoming have some of the best costumes, but are content with brooding magnetically while fan bamping looking truly godly, goes over the top slinky as a femme fatale to make all other femmes fatales look like nuns. Zhu King has a short but memorable cameo as an angry goddess, while Angela Baby brings childlike beauty to her role as an automaton with feelings. 
when Zhang is great fun as Neja, though he's overshadowed by the baby incarnation of his character, a delightfully animated creation that gets the film's most memorable scene. In search of his fire wheels, baby Neja lays waste to an entire undersea palace with a destructive flood of pee and explosive farts, splitting giant crabs in two and bullying a giant octopus, much to the chagrin of the East Sea King, played by Wei's Li, who hasn't been so unhinged and hilarious since 1994's Wing Chun, and much to the bewilderment of this reviewer. Did we mention this comes right after a short musical number during which Merfolk waddled to a fun little song? The film having underperformed at the box office, we may never see the sequel which is so abruptly set up in the final minutes, but surely we can still rewatch the Merfolk song.